Compared to many states, the medical marijuana industry in Oklahoma is lightly regulated, but that changed a bit this week. Governor Kevin Stitt signing a bill that creates more oversight of an industry that generated $831 million in gross revenues in 2020 and more than $56 million in tax revenue. The new law attempts to answer this simple question. Who exactly owns and operates the farms that supply the product? Jason Doyle reports on why that's important, why it's been difficult to know until now. Recent investigations by the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics turned up black market marijuana grow operations using the guise of Oklahoma's medical marijuana program. It has led to the discovery that foreign money might be behind some of these operations, and so House Bill 2272 was amended to address the issue. If you watch the news, you've seen a lot of busts right in the last few weeks with uh, um, the Bureau of Narcotics and OSBI and the, and the different law enforcement agencies. And so the AG was, is big on trying to address the, the problem we have with foreign entities. I mean, uh, we have foreign governments that are, they may not be in Oklahoma, but they are uh, operating with license in Oklahoma. Representative Josh West worked with the Oklahoma Attorney General's Office to craft the language which requires licensed cannabis businesses, like dispensaries and growing operations, to disclose foreign investment. It requires them to report if they are financially backed by a foreign entity under perjury. And so if they don't, they can be charged with perjury, they can lose their license. Merely having a um, disclosure of ownership is certainly far less onerous, far less threatening to any business. Um, I, know, I don't know how much compliance there'll be with it. Oklahoma Cannabis Liberty Alliance co-founder Dr. Lawrence Pasternak sees the concern about the black market interfering with the medical marijuana industry in Oklahoma. The idea behind it, of course, is that there are concerns with regards to foreign ownership, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Chinese ownership. Um, I, I'm not sure beyond that if there is um, the so-called Mexican cartels involved, I don't know. But the stories that I hear have to do with uh, Asian, specifically Chinese ownership. Pastor Dak points out many legislators are simply hearing concerns from their constituents about what may be happening behind closed doors. Lawmakers are discussing the problems that they're encountering in their districts with regards to some of the grows that are uh, have foreign ownership. One gentleman called me from uh, Osage County and he said, you know, I'm 65 years old. <clears throat> I'm retired. I, I kind of do this to supplement my retirement. West confirms his constituent was approached by a foreign investor. He said, I was um, contacted by someone that was, uh, I don't know where they were from, but he said they were foreign, um, someone from a foreign country. And, and he said, I will pay you $300,000 cash if you keep the license in your name and you allow us to operate the business. And so, so that's what we're seeing. Those foreign investors don't limit themselves to grow operations either. So we've had a few groups come through, um, but at the end of the day, we enjoy being an Oklahoma group that's, you know, kind of family owned and operated. So, so it offers like that aren't necessarily of interest to us, but it definitely is becoming very commonplace. Wyatt believes House Bill 2272 can be a tool to help keep Oklahoma's medical marijuana program from being exploited. I think that it's almost uh, a smart move and prudent because we've just witnessed the fact that a group came in from out of the country, opened multiple operations here, and then had the product going out of the state. I mean, we've just seen that that happened, so I think that it would actually be a benefit to our market and uh, kind of the safety surrounding it. Foreign investors and the black market are creating fair competition issues for legitimate cannabis businesses. And with how saturated the market is now, it's very difficult to not only compete against many other businesses, but also to compete against the black market. The cost of land is another issue because a lot of these times these uh, these people are coming in and paying cash money for this, and, and they may buy, you know, anywhere from fifty to a thousand acres at ten thousand dollars an acre. That's that is uh, that's that's hard to, for the average farmer out there to compete, and and um, and you're competing with with cash money. Pasternak also feels the industry itself could help protect the patient by providing information about the origins of the products they're selling. The more information a consumer has about that supply chain, um, the better they'll be. And it also, you know, the less hidden things are and the less nefarious things could be. And um, the more just basically in the sunlight, right, um, the whole system would be. Cannabis organizations creating a type of certification process for growers and dispensaries could also provide a solution to assure the public of a safe product. I know that there's interest on the part of a few groups to do it, 
but if grows were more open um, to having third parties come in, not government, but some private organization that wants to say, here's our checklist of what we regard as good practices, and let's see what your, your grow does. I think that that's a really great next step for our state. House Bill 2272 did get its day on the House floor last week. Members, this was the cap bill. Uh, we worked with the AG on it, so now what this bill does, it requires existing businesses and businesses moving forward to report under uh, perjury if they are uh, financed by a foreign entity. And was sent to the governor's desk. 69 I 4 nay. Having received a majority vote of those elect to and constituting the House, I declare the bill to have passed. With Stitt signing the bill into law earlier this week. Jason Doyle, The Oklahoma News Report. Thanks, Jason. House Bill 2272 also requires the Oklahoma Medical and Marijuana Authority to perform on-site inspections of cannabis businesses every six months.